It's no secret that Vital NTB has kind of ignored e-bikes for a while. That's about to change. Welcome to Idaho, home to some of the finest motorized trails in the USA. I'm Brandon Terman, and I'm joined by Sean Grizz McClendon and Brad Howell. In this video, we're gonna dive deep into these four e-mountain bikes, providing you with performance comparisons. We also have a grand old time doing it. If you've been curious what you can get away with when you put a motor and a great big battery into a mountain bike, this one is worth a watch. At the very end, we're also gonna let you know which bike and motor each of us enjoyed the most. Let's meet the contenders. <laughs> Aiming for a proper sampling of the goods, our lineup includes 150 millimeter travel rides from four well-known brands. Up first, we've got the Black on Black Trek Rail with a Bosch Performance Line CX motor, a generous 625 watt hour battery, and 29 inch wheels. Plus SRAM access on the 9.9 .9 build? Fancy! Ready to rally is the Santa Cruz Heckler, a recent creation and the first e-bike in the brand's lineup. They've gone with the Shimano Steps E8000 motor on this one, and the down tube houses a 504 watt hour battery. This one rolls on 27.5 plus. Entering the ring with some exciting modern geometry is the new 29 inch version of the Norco Sight VLT. It's also equipped with the Shimano motor, has a big 630 watt hour battery, and there's a mounting option for a sizable extender as well. And then there's the specialized Levo SL a super lightweight e-bike that falls a bit closer to a regular 29 inch mountain bike. An exclusive motor design makes it possible, as does the integrated 320 watt hour battery. Pop on the water bottle extender and you've got added range. Can it hang with the big bikes? Where does each bike excel? How do they all stack up? Game on. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no climb challenge. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Too much power. laughs> Still the king! <laughs> Odds on Grizz. Odds on Grizz. In the trek. I put a four pack of 10 barrel Boise Strong on it. He won't make it. <laughs> <laughs> he won't make it. Beat the Levo. Yeah, dog. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, Grizz. Come on, Grizz! That's so good. Okay. Straight up the milk. Straight up. Weight, weight doesn't matter when you got an e-bike, dude. <laughs> <laughs> How about this creation? When the Specialized Levo SL launched, it turned heads for its sleek looks and low weight. This 29 inch e-bike is just 38.3 pounds. Add on the water bottle battery extender and you're at 40.6 pounds, which is still a whopping 5.5 pounds less than the Heckler, the next closest bike in our test. 
In addition to having the shortest chain stays at 437 millimeters, that low weight makes it the most mountain bike feeling of the bunch with way better agility and slow speed pop. It handles quicker in tight terrain and it's easier to pump and throw around, providing an experience that's altogether less cumbersome. It just has a more familiar feel and ride quality to it. You can brake a little bit later for corners and hopping the rear end up tricky climbs is also way easier. <laughs> The reduced weight is in large part due to the use of an exclusive and more efficient 240 watt motor. It puts out half the torque of the other bikes at 35 newton meters. On the trail it provided the most natural motor feel of the bunch, gently boosting your efforts at precise times, and it was the unofficial wheelie master. Oh yeah, manualing is a breeze on this thing. We found that shifting was an altogether smoother experience with less worry about snapping chains, and the 20 mile an hour sign off was definitely the least noticeable when it hits. You'll pay a pretty penny for the most mountain bike like experience though. At $13,500, this bike was the most expensive in the lineup. Now, some of you might say that we should have opted for specialized full size Levo with a bigger motor, but we were just too curious not to include the Levo SL. What if this new bike could win us over as longtime mountain bikers and hang with the bigger e bikes? Well, we found that it holds pace on low angle climbs and flatter terrain, but the other bikes run away and maintain more battery power on steeper grades and soft terrain, where just having some more torque is a benefit. Expect to ride the Levo SL in its fastest mode to keep up. Climbing requires more effort than the bigger e-bikes, though not nearly as much as a comparable stump jumper. We got the best performance out of the motor after adjusting the tune just a little bit with specialized mission control app. Our hot tip, crank up trail mode to get a bit more top end speed without sacrificing much battery. The ability to precisely customize the output is really cool and the app actually has even more for those that want it. There's a stealth mode and a battery minder. Battery life was actually really good considering the smaller 320 watt hour size that's in the down tube. With the 160 watt hour addition, you're up to 480 watt hours, which is nearly the same as the Santa Cruz. The extender bottles do seem to go really fast though. We also noted a pretty drastic reduction in the pedal assist as the battery power drops to two bars. The multi-shift 1x12 gearing and the smaller 32-2 chainring are definitely necessary as you're going to need the gear range on this bike. This allows you to pedal the bike up and over the same terrain when the battery runs out or if you turn it off. It's not hugely efficient in this scenario due to the low anti-squat numbers, the weight, and the slack of seat angle, but it still works better with no motor assistance than the rest of the bikes do. Thanks to the small size of the expander batteries, the Levo SL is also the only one that you can reasonably fly with, although you have to disassemble the bike to remove the internal battery. We love the overall finish quality, dialed frame protection, and SWAT tool. Cornering on this bike is a pleasure and the geometry is spot on. Despite having a good in the bike feel though, we felt the least aggressive on it of all the e-bikes. In subsequent testing, we found that swapping the 150 millimeter Fox 34 fork to 160 millimeter 36 and a slightly shorter stem can really bring this bike alive, unlocking a bit of extra stability and boosting your confidence. Our experience drove home just how much fun can come from an e-bike's big brawler nature, and the Levo SL just doesn't quite have that quality in its stock trim. Relative to the reach, the long seat tube also limits the use of longer travel dropper posts. It is still an absolute blast though. We really look forward to testing this bike and it delivered the expected mountain bike ride boosted by a moderate electric assist. If you want to feel like you're still earning your climbs and retain a familiar nimble feel, the Levo SL is the weapon of choice. All right, so what we have here is the zero to 20 to zero challenge. We're gonna take off on these here e-bikes. Once we hit 20 miles an hour, which is when the motor cuts off, let out a shriek, grab brake. Stop as fast as you can. Ready, set, let's go. Here we go, zero to 20. 20 to zero. Oh! Ah, 20. <laughs> Next up is the Norco Sight VLT, arguably the best bang for your buck EMTB in the test lineup. This $7,500 build combines a carbon mainframe with an aluminum chainstay, and it features a quality spec with a 160mm RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork, a Super Deluxe Select Plus rear shock, powerful SRAM Codar brakes, 
Maxxis Max Grip Double Down Tires with tons of grip, and it also has the most progressive geometry of the bunch. Now, this one is undeniably hefty at 52.7 pounds, making it a chore to put in the back of a truck without some weightlifting experience, but it rides lighter than the scale indicates. Compared to the Heckler, which has the same Shimano Steps motor and specs, just a bit of extra perceived effort was required on climbs. At 78.7 degrees, the Norco has the steepest effective seat tube angle of the bunch. This puts you in a really nice upright climbing position, which is awesome in big uphill scenarios. You're able to keep that front end down and charge to the top. When the terrain points straight up the hill, you get tired or you just want to get things done, the motor's boost mode delivers a massive performance jump. But it still lacks a bit of that snappy torque and steady pull of the Bosch CX motor. Pointed downhill, wide open segments and sweeping corners are the Sight VLT's forte. Yeah. <laughs> With the slackest head angle of 64 degrees, the longest wheelbase, and long 458 millimeter chainstays, it really likes going fast and staying stable. We actually hit 41.9 miles an hour on this bike, the fastest recorded speed without feeling sketchy hey. at all. That's some stability for you. On the other hand, tight trails and quick direction changes do show moments of weakness sometimes, and jumping the bike on steeper lips can be a handful as rider position and preload need to be just right. On many trail style jumps though, it's just big grins and air under your wheels. Dude, this bike actually jumps. This is my favorite jumping e-bike out of the bunch. It's official. The Norco's got a little bit of pop to her. I see you, Sight. VLT, I see you. Compared to the more expensive e-bikes, some of the little details are a bit rough around the edges on the Norco. We experienced some rubbing on the upper chain guide. The cable situation is kind of out of control and sealing on the frame as a whole seems subpar in a few locations. If we were to keep the Norco as our own, we'd want to swap the contact points and consider a drivetrain upgrade once the stock GX cassette needed to be replaced. One huge positive on the Sight VLT, the integrated battery life proved to be really good and there is an additional 360 watt hour range extender for more adventurous riders. That'll get you up to 990 watt hours total and that is really impressive. Overall, coming in with the best price point in the lineup, the Norco Sight VLT shines in wide open bits and gets a 5 out of 5 rating for fun, leaving very little for us to complain about. It's a power movement. Is that, that's the one. Spin. All right. Yeah. Deckler. Oh, this is a... Easier than the trek. <laughs> let's bring it. Let's bring this is the this is the challenge. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that's some effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This one's paperweight. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger level stuff right there. Up. Easy. Now for the Santa Cruz Heckler. At 47.3 pounds, this one stacks up really well in the weight game, coming in 1.5 pounds less than the Trek Rail. On trail, the Heckler was hands down the most eager to tackle rowdy sections. It really stood out with its general brabability. It doesn't matter what's in front of you, this bike has it handled. The additional low central mass of a motor and a battery paired with that buttery smooth lower link VPP suspension blew our minds when changing directions in various situations of smashing. It has a remarkable ability to hold a line at pace in a wide variety of terrain with top-notch stability. The progressive suspension design also provides much more playfulness and pop than you'd expect for a 47-pounder. Corners are an effortless hoot as well. Just lay the heckler down and hang on. With an in-the-bike feel, this thing rips. Somewhat surprisingly, we actually found the 27.5 plus tires to be a big benefit when run at the higher pressures that an e-bike warrants. The tires help provide ample traction at all times, accelerate and decelerate quickly, and the added rubber helps absorb bumps better. The build is really well sorted with a DH rated reserve rear rim, SRAM code brakes, and a Fox 36 fork. Santa Cruz's pricing was also the most affordable in our lineup when comparing it with an equivalent mountain bike, the Bronson. The bike Shimano Steps E8000 motor provides up to 70 newton meters of torque and 250 watts of power, and its feel would be great for a wide range of riders. 
The motor gives a strong initial boost with lots of early grunt that will really help get things moving. On the weakness front though, the motor signs off pretty quick and it lacks much top end assistance, almost like it has more to give and it's being held back by programming. When directly compared to the Bosch powered Trek rail, the Shimano motor is at a noticeable disadvantage in overall acceleration and steady pull. We found that it can fall a bit flat on steeper, punchy climbs. The Heckler's relatively slack seat angle also led to some loop outs on some really steep stuff. There's a lot going on in the shock area, which could make it harder to clean and service. We also felt the need to swap for a shorter 35mm stem to lessen a bit of the front wheel pushing and wandering that we felt through turns early on. Finally, with no extender option and a smaller 504 watt hour battery relative to the other full size EMTBs, this was also the first bike to run out of power. Riding it while dead and pushing it uphill are both very taxing and certifiably suck, so keep range in mind if you're a big distance rider. The dead battery guy. It's when you feel like you have no friends. I'm all alone. All my friends have battery. Range, zero miles. <laughs> Got a burrito by chance? <laughs> the motor's trail and boost modes are sweet, but some added eco mode time should definitely be a consideration on this Watt Guzzler. The battery is removable though, so you could carry a full size spare if you wanted. Overall, if there was an e-bike that could convince the die-hard mountain biker to like these electric toys, it may well be the Heckler. We love that Santa Cruz brought this name back embodied in an e-bike. It carries all of the original Heckler attitude to a new era, and it did a number on our perception of e-bikes. Climbing is easier and going downhill, you're going to be filled with new levels of confidence as you plow through rough stuff with loads of comfort. This one is incredibly stable with great pop, excellent small bump compliance and big hit reserves, plus a strong part spec. Within just a few minutes of riding, the Bosch CX equipped 29 inch Trek rail gives the immediate impression of EMTB dominance. Shifting on the 9.9 .9 build is so crispy with SRAM's electronic eagle access, and the ease and precision of RockShox reverb access dropper post is top notch. For once we felt like Leonardo DiCaprio's character on the Titanic, too poor to buy this experience but lucky to be enjoying it. The bike uses a Trek exclusive reactive shock technology inside of a RockShox Deluxe rear shock. That's paired with their ABP rear pivot, and you'll find geometry adjustment chips nestled into the upper seat stays. The 250 watt Bosch CX motor has a wide range of power settings that you can access through the informative top tube display, plus it has super snappy acceleration and consistent torque through your cadence range. Extra effort on this bike is rewarded more than any other since the motor just keeps on pulling giving you that little bit of extra consistent torque that makes it amazing in scenarios where you're just pushing things to the max. When you have the traction for it, the motor helps claw its way up climbs in a way that the competitors can't. <laughs> Damn it! On the steepest bits of trail, you can actually be fighting the edge of traction because of just how much the motor puts out. At times it walks a fine line between being too much and just perfect, but we'd definitely rather have it on tap than be left needing more. When it finally does sign off at 20 miles an hour, you can definitely feel it on the uphills and moderate descents, and you're gonna have to keep on those pedals to keep this one moving. A recent Bosch software update after the filming of this video provides additional motor control features, increased torque from 75 to 85 newton meters, and an even more natural, intuitive feeling EMTB mode, making it extra appealing. The rail also won the Energizer Bunny Award for the best battery longevity in our test fleet why I weigh so much. <laughs> <laughs> After the Heckler and the Levo SL were dead and the Sight VLT was left on life support, the rail's removable 625 watt hour battery consistently had miles left in the tank. Weighing in at 48.9 pounds, the perceived weight while descending was like a race ready downhill sled, providing loads of comfort and stability. Well balanced geometry helps it corner well, and the bike handled high speed, rough descents like you'd expect from your favorite Trek, Enduro, or downhill bike. One standout was how well you could get the front wheel up to manual moto whoops. Yeehaw! On the weakness front, there aren't many downsides. However, even when we had it in the low bottom bracket height setting, it felt like we were riding on top of the bike as opposed to the more desirable in the bike feel. This characteristic was most noticeable in consecutive tight corners where it could get stood up in nearly every apex. Yeah, definitely finding I'm like 
you got a break earlier on these, especially the trek here. A little bit of break earlier than you think leads to just more stability and better exit speed. I've been overcooking way too many turns on this lap. Oh, so yeah, see, I should have braked a little earlier. Had the brake in the apex of that corner and botched it. And finding like braking early and really trying to just definitely stay off the front brake when you're in the apex. These things stand up so easy if you're if you're braking while cornering. Like more so than a regular bike. There was also a slight stink bug effect under heavy braking with room for improvement on small bump sensitivity and heavy compressions compared to the others in the test. It's possible that Trek has gone a bit too firm on the rebound tune as all three of our testers had it maxed out and occasionally we felt like it was just a bit too slow in packing up. The super rounded profile of the Bontrager SE5 tires definitely leads to decreased confidence when you're hitting corners, sometimes letting things get all kinds of two-wheel drifty but acceleration and braking traction was still really good. All we'd want is a bit more side bite out of the tires. The handlebar remote is also a bit large and it can be difficult to manage while you're riding. Some added simplicity here would be a good thing. Ultimately, the Trek rail does everything pretty well, making it one of the best all-rounders in the test. With the sending characteristics you'd expect from your favorite Trek mountain bike, the rail is easy to ride and even easier to climb thanks to its snappy torque and steady pull. If budget is of no concern, the 9.9 .9 build is near the top of the pecking order in the EMTB landscape. It's not as playful or as charismatic as some of the others, but this tuxedo looking bike symbolizes class and intention with a big win on battery life. So what are our thoughts on the e-bike experience in general? Well, e-bikes are just that, they're e-bikes. They're not mountain bikes, and at 1 50th of the horsepower, they're not dirt bikes either. They're a new type of bike that deserves some consideration for the best riding locations. The wide open motorized trails that we were on were ideal. We couldn't believe the downhill bike-like sense of comfort that they encouraged, the speeds that we hit, the amount of terrain that we covered, and the stuff that we could climb. They are so much more stable than you'd expect for the amount of travel that they have, which really lets you charge through <laughs> some stuff. We're talking pick up, hang on, huck off, charge. That's something that we really enjoy doing as mountain bikers. Talking with your buds on climbs has also never been more enjoyable. Good company aside, riding them is a 10 out of 10 on the fun scale, and they can open up miles of new opportunities if you have legal trails to enjoy. Just prepare for one heck of an upper body workout, remind yourself to break early, and be mindful of other trail users. It's pretty cool to feel what the infusion of a motor and a battery can do to something with two wheels. For now, these bikes are expensive, limited on terrain, and an absolute riot. Yes, it is. It's very ugly. <laughs> Brad Howell, what's your favorite bike of the bunch? Ah, come here. My favorite was the Trek Rail. This thing is absolutely well-rounded. I love the motor. The Bosch motor, it blows everything else away. Consistent power, still going strong with the battery. This thing loves the corners, and it took me a little while, but I feel confident I can make this thing dance when I need to. Sean Grizz McClendon, what's your favorite bike of the bunch? Come on in. The Santa Cruz Heckler. Uh, first and foremost, the reason being, I had the most fun on this bike. Uh, I also confirmed that I'm a 27.5 wheel guy. Um, this bike just did everything that I love to do really well. Cornered great, had great pop, um, was easy to manual considering what the machine is. Um, again, I would love to put the Bosch motor in this bike as well, but I think all around fun factor. Heckler takes the cake. Brandon slapping Huckham to flat Terman. What's your favorite e-bike of the bunch? My favorite bike was also the Santa Cruz Heckler. I really enjoyed it. It's 100% stable, progressive, reliable feel. You just point this thing and freaking shoot and it's an absolute party. On the motor front though, also a huge fan of the Bosch. If you could combine the Bosch, the Santa Cruz, the seat angle of the Norco and a weight a little bit closer to that Specialized, man, I'd be in heaven. Thanks for joining us for this comparison of four intriguing EMTBs. I hope you guys were entertained and learned something. I know that we had an absolute blast out here in Idaho. Be sure to head to vitalmtb.com for a full spec comparison, suspension analysis on all the bikes, and relative performance ratings. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the trails.
That was it. <laughs> <laughs>